Well, the MG Hector was the first product from Modest Garages in India and it was very popular because of the kind of value for money it presented itself with. It was a big car, it was a big SUV with a lot of space inside. However, over a period of time, the sales numbers have gone down with the introduction of cars like the Harrier and the Mahindra Scorpio N. So, MG decided to give the car an overall facelift, not only in terms of the looks but also a lot of features have been added to this so this is the next gen mg hector and we're going to tell you everything about it in this detailed video in india itself the mg hector has seen three facelifts this is the third uh, version and we have seen the grill go from big to slim and now a very massive diamond mesh grill now you get a lot of diamond shaped uh, chrome studs right here with a big MG logo at the center. Here you have the 360 degree camera, which now is high definition. And you'll see that the bumper has been redesigned completely. You get a lot of chrome. A lot of chrome has been slapped on to the MG Hector, not only from the front, but also from the back. And we will see that as well. So you get a chrome garnish right here on the bumper. Right here, you have the radar sensor and the car gets autonomous level 2 ADAS. You get some more chrome here. You still have the DRLs which are multifunction. They act as a DRL as well as turn indicators and you still have that swipe out feature on them. And the headlamp cluster has been integrated right here with some more chrome here. These are bi-projector LED headlamps and right here you have the fog lamps as well. Moving to the side, uh, you will see that there is not a lot of changes. You get 18 inch alloy wheels these are dual tone and they are machined cut they are not diamond cut again you'll see use of chrome right here on the side and some more chrome has also been added to the handlebars you get a satin silver roof rail and as you move to the back you will notice that the back looks different as well now this piece right here has been retained from the old car but what you get here is now a connected strip mg calls them the blade connected tail lamps and they glow up in the night as well here you have a large hector branding and it has branding right here the internet inside logo has gone and you you will see a redesigned bumper for the rear as well you get parking sensors right here and you have the 360 degree camera this one is for the back and this one also has high definition resolution. Now the bumper gets some more chrome here. These are four exhausts, they're not real. The actual exhaust pipe is right here and a skid plate right here. So those were all the changes on the exterior. However, MG has loaded the car with a lot of features and some changes on the interior as well. So let's go inside the car and take a look at them. Now, firstly, let's take a look at the door panel. You get a dual tone finish. You get this nice beige and black as a soft to touch. What MG has done new with this car is this metallic brush metal finish, which looks rather nice. And you have all the controls integrated right here. This one also has been uh, colored in satin silver, which looks really nice. The speaker also gets the diamond mesh finish along with some more satin silver finish right here. You still get the electrically adjustable front seats, both for the driver and the front passenger and both these seats are ventilated uh, right here you will see the controls for the mirrors so this button is to open and close the mirrors and you can use this joystick to adjust the ORVMs this is to adjust the angle of the headlamp throw this is for the brightness for the MID control and if you press and hold this button the boot will open up right here you have the fuel filler cap opener and the opener for the hood now if you look at the front of the new mg hector you will see that there are a lot of additions and changes being done here firstly you will notice this massive screen it's 14 inches to put things in perspective this is bigger than a screen that is that you get on a macbook pro 13 inch so yes that's how big it is and it is vertical so reading maps and other stuff is going to be really, really easy. So let me just show you, for example, I've been connected to uh, this via Apple CarPlay 
and you can see a lot of information when you're looking at the maps. So a lot of features can be seen on this. We'll take a look at them a little later, but let's take a look at all the other changes. Right here, you get dual tone finish for the dashboard. Here you have soft touch materials, uh, leathered finish. Here you have some piano black finish with satin silver inserts. The AC vents are nicely tucked in here and they are plush with the dashboard body. They do not protrude out from the body itself. If you look at these side vents as well, they are well within the body of the dashboard. Right here you have a glove box, which is nice and deep. However, it is not cooled. Now, if you look at the center console, this is what uplifts the cabin a lot and makes it more luxurious. Thanks to this brushed metal finish right here. The drive selector has also changed. It looks more premium now and it has this nice soft to touch finish right here and the satin silver insert along with this button which is also finished in satin silver. Now this cluster right here if you see uh, you get these half diamond uh, inserts right here which looks really really nice uh, uplifts the look of the cabin. It has piano black finish and right here you have the uh, indicator for the drive mode so you have the park reverse neutral drive and sports mode right here you also have a button for eco mode so when you press that in the car will be in eco mode always and here you have some aircraft style buttons this controls the ventilated seats for both uh, this is for the passenger side this is for the driver side you can also turn on and off the traction control you can put the car in max ac mode and this is for the hazard lamp Right here you have two cup holders with this lid right here which can be retracted back. Uh, this is the parking brake. For the automatic variants you get an electronic parking brake but for the manual one you will get a lever. And this is for the auto start stop function. So if you want to save fuel you can just put it in auto start stop and the car will stop whenever you are at a halt at a signal and when you uh, lift the brake or you press the accelerator the car will start again. Right here you have an armrest with some storage space inside and you're right inside here is a power socket for a 12 volt power connector. Now this is one point where you can charge your devices. There's also a USB port right here to charge the devices and a USB port right here. This will not only charge the device but also connect the media control so you can put in a USB right here if you want to play songs from there or uh, you can use wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto using this USB port. The car does get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is an additional so this is just like an additional connection. Also you get a wireless charging pad right here. Also you'll see that the start stop button has now been changed it was round first now it's square with this satin silver finish. The steering wheel also remains the same more or less but it has this satin silver insert along with a whole lot of buttons right here for the cruise control and the ADAS features. The IRVM is auto dimming. You also get a sunglass holder. This is for the sunroof and you get illuminated vanity mirrors on both the driver and the passenger side. The ADAS camera has been located right here into this cluster and we also saw the radar outside. So that's what the front of the new MG Hector looks like, the front cabin. Um, let's hop into the rear and see if things are different there. Now like the front, the rear door panel also has the dual tone finish along with brushed metal finish right here. And there's not a lot of changes at the rear. You obviously have a lot of space. Three people can sit here very easily, very comfortably. But there are only two people. You can just put this down and rest your arm here. Put in your favorite beverage and enjoy it while you're on the drive. You also get two cup holders here so you can carry your favorite beverage and enjoy the drive. Now if you want to take a little nap, you can also recline these seats. And they go down up to this level so that you can recline and just relax while you're on the journey. Besides that, some more comfort features, you get AC vents right here. Uh, however, there is no airflow adjustment. So 
that's a miss but you do get a usb charging port right here and some storage space here as well so you can just connect the phone here and then slide it in the floorboard is also very flat so the center passenger won't have any issues with uh, you know keeping their feet and you will not struggle for knee room now the seat belt for the center passenger has been integrated here in the seat itself so they can use it they can strap themselves in uh, with this seat belt right here you get adjustable headrests for all three passengers as well and you also have the isofix child seat anchors the reading lamps have been integrated on either side which is here and this side for the left side passenger handles they retract slowly so you don't have the annoying sound when they are left and you also have this coat hook right here if you want to store some stuff here you have these magazine holders and both the seats so the rear seat is a pretty pleasant place to begin sit relax and enjoy the drive as you're seated in the back seat now let's go in the front and check out all the new features now before we get driving let's take a look at all the features on this new actor so this is what the cluster will look this is the map page of the md system and it's powered by map my india it also gives you the aqi index the temperature and everything else and right here if you can zoom in you'll see your current location now if you move into the vehicle settings here you can control everything sunroof the lamps as on the outside lamps you have the ambient light you have the window controls the locking controls tailgate how it operates the side mirror controls wiper the controls for the wireless charger and you also get the tpms which will tell you the power, tire pressure and all the wheels now this is something that is new which is the driving assistant here you have the forward collision warning now you can set the intensity of the alerts uh, you can set it to low moderate or high and what this does is if you are not hitting the brake the car detects that there is an object in front of the car maybe another vehicle or any other obstacle and it detects that you're not braking it will give you an alert now you can set it only to the alert mode where it will just give you a beep and a warning you can set up the sensitivity for it it can be a low beep moderate or a high beep and you can also set it to alert and automatic emergency braking so if the car senses that you are not braking on time it will start hitting the brake on its own next you have the lane departure warning so if the car can detect the lanes if it they are properly marked with white lines the car will detect the lanes and if the car is drifting away from the lane it will throw in an alert so that also you can set it uh, to low and high now here you also get a display the alert display will come on the mid uh, it can be a sound wherein you can hear a beep when you are departing from a lane or uh, you'll also get a steering shake so it'll just vibrate the steering a little bit and so that you know that the car is departing from a lane and you need to come back into your lane and it can also be set to steering shake plus sound so there will be a warning sound plus the steering will vibrate next is the intelligent high beam assist so you can turn this feature on and off what this essentially does is when you're driving at night if the car does not detect any ambient light so if there are street lights on if there is a car in front of you that you're following or trailing or there is oncoming traffic so there is another car coming from the opposite side the lights will always be in low beam as soon as all these factors are removed so there are no street lights you're driving in a very dark area you're not trailing any vehicle there are no oncoming vehicles the lights will switch to automatic high beam so you don't have to do the effort of turning on the high beam turning it off all the time the car will do everything for you automatically now another feature that has been added to this is the automatic turn indicator so let's say you are making a turn and you forget to turn the indicator on you can just tilt the steering and the indicators will come on so and as soon as the steering is straight the indicators go off it works very seamlessly the only thing is it has to detect that the steering is turning so in a stationary position like i'm doing it you see that 
a little more than a half turn is what it takes to trigger the turn indicators but when you're moving we'll demo it while we're driving the car while we're moving it comes on at this level so which is really really nice so it is a feature it's just when you forget to turn the indicator but always use the indicator beforehand while you intend to make a turn now another introduction for the sunroof controls is this new uh, slide to open so firstly you have this control to open and close the sunroof so like just one tap and the sunroof starts opening and it keeps on opening till you you know in interrupt it and so like here you have to press it again to start opening the sunroof but now with this new feature what you can do is you can select the percentage of the sunroof that you want open so like you can select from just opening the vent then 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent 40 50 all the way up to 100 percent open so let's set it to say 50 percent and see how much it opens So as you see, it has opened 50% and if I move this all the way to open, it will now go back and open fully. So very interesting feature. So you can select the levels uh, with a 10% incrementation and you can actually get the exact amount of opening that you want. Now the MG Hector also has some voice commands uh, that have been added. You can give it 100 plus commands. 50 of them are in Hindi. So for example, if I um, give it a command, hello MG. I'm here. Mujhe garmi lag rahi hai. Okay, temperature is lower to 18.5 degrees. So as you can see, it does understand Hindi as well. So there are some preset commands that you can give the car and uh, there are a total of 150 of them are in Hindi so you can speak to the car in Hindi as well only thing is that the response time is a little slow um, let's try one more hello MG I'm listening sunroof khol do there you go so it does understand a mix of Hindi and English so it detected sunroof and then khol do open it opened the sunroof Hello, MG. Yes. Close the sunroof. So, as before, the voice commands work seamlessly well, and uh, MG has been, you know, improving the feature list and the command list over a period of time. They have added a lot of new commands in this car as well. Besides that, you have a lot of other online functions, the MG weather, uh, you have the inbox, so the messages that come in, you can get the over the air updates uh, right here. I call is for emergency uh, calling or you have any issue with the car, you can just call the call center. You have the GeoSavan app as well. Shortpedia is for news, Park Plus, so you can get your Park Plus account synced right here and you also have a theme store so you can change the theme if you don't like this bluish look that uh, is there right now you can select from a number of themes and just set up the theme that you like now the resolution on the cameras has been changed on the new mg Hector. all the four cameras are now high definition let's take a look so as you can see the reverse this is the reverse camera i've put the car in reverse now and this is what it looks like you get dynamic guidelines and if you want a 3d view this is what it looks like so when you go back you know where exactly you're going you get a view right here you can also switch the view so you can just drag your finger like this so if you want a side view to see any obstacles and when you go back that's what it will look like and if you are in a tight space again you're trying to park the car in a tight space in your driving so this will also give you the distance from the front vehicle and as you can see the resolution is very clear and the images from all the four cameras it's stitched together really well now let's take the car for a spin and let me try to demo a few of the new ADAS features 
Now mechanically there are no changes to the new MG Hector. It gets the two engine options in the form of a 2 litre diesel which produces 170 bhp and 350 newton meters of torque while the petrol is a 1.5 liter turbo engine that produces 141 bhp and 250 newton meters of torque this right here is uh, the 1.5 petrol with the cvt gearbox the diesel comes with a six-speed manual while the petrol comes with a six-speed manual or a six-speed cvt gearbox this one right here is the one with the cvt gearbox and in terms of drivability there is nothing new uh, in this car there's nothing different it has the same dimensions it has the same power to weight ratio it everything is almost the same so there are not a lot of changes on this car but what changes the driving of the new mg hector is the adas features so this button right here is the adaptive cruise control button which turns on the mg pilot system so once the mg pilot is on it sets the speed now the lowest speed that you can set it to is 10 kilometers if you see this blue circle right here that's the lowest speed that you can uh, set it to and that is what the traffic jam assist is so the car can crawl at a lower speed of up to 10 kmph so you just press the throttle and the car will start moving till it detects an obstacle in front of it and the speed can be as low as 10 kilometers per hour when you're in a traffic jam that's the speeds that you will be doing usually in cruise control the speeds start at 30 kmph and onwards that's when you can actually turn the system on but this can go to a low of 10 kmph now i have the mg pilot on i'm going to set it to my current speed which is 58 uh, kilometers so the speed limit on this road is 60 and this will now cruise at 58 kmph my foot is off the accelerator and if it detects any car in front of it it will start braking automatically there is a vehicle in uh, front of us so we're going to just increase our speed a little bit and set the adaptive cruise control so now the adaptive cruise control is on and as you can see the car is braking itself to keep a distance between the car in the front and uh, the Hector itself so that's how it works as the car moves ahead the speed is picking up I have set the speed to 56 as the car closes in it applies the brake and the speed is going down so yeah the adaptive cruise control does work perfectly now you'll see that as the vehicle is moved in front the speed has also automatically increased my foot is not on now there is another vehicle that just came in the middle and then the car applied the brake automatically speed has been reduced considerably to adjust according and maintain a distance between the vehicle in the front so it does work flawlessly it is kind of an assisted feature so you should not rely on this completely uh, use it as an emergency so like the emergency brakes kick in and it would avoid a lot of collisions in terms of you know how the car overtook us and it went into the lane that we were driving in so so compensate for that the Hector also braked itself now when you are stationary in the MG Hector and you turn on the indicators like so you will see that the 360 camera start working and you get a 3d a view of the surroundings now right here the car is parked here so you have a motorcycle here a scooter here there's another scooter at the back and you can see it very clearly with this 3d view you can also move to 2d view where it in now since i've given the right indicator it's showing me what's on the right side of the car and if you go to 3d view it'll give me this view right here now this is the left side this is the right side so i know where i'm going and i can if there is any obstacle in my blind spot it can be located and viewed here so that's a very very interesting feature now the mg pilot system also comes to brings the car to a complete halt when it is on and as you can see we are at a signal right now and when the car notices that there is an obstacle in front it starts braking itself and comes to a complete halt my foot is not on the brake or the accelerator and now that the traffic has started moving it started getting a move on and it will go up to the speed that i have set that is 35 kmph So 
So that's how the ADAS features on this car works. Uh, there are other few, which is the lane departure warning. Now the lanes right here are not very visible. They are blurred out lines. So the car is having some difficulty in reading the lanes, which is why the automatic systems are not working and we are not getting the lane change alert. But if the lines are very well defined and the car is able to detect them, it does work seamlessly. Now there is another new feature in the MG Hector, which is the ambient light. Now you get eight different colors in the ambient light and they can be operated with voice commands. So let me give it a command. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this because we are in broad daylight, but in the night it does work properly. So let's see how it works. Hello, MG. Hi, how can I help? Turn ambient light color to blue. Hello, MG. Yes. Change ambient light color to red. Okay, light mode is red. So that's how it works. I'm not sure if the camera could capture it and you could see the light colors changing, but in the dark, it does work properly. And there's one more feature for the ambient lights. Hello, MG. Yes. Set mood light to random. So what happens in this is that the lights will keep changing after a certain period of time. So if you are not happy with one color, it will keep changing and it, it will keep switching between all the eight colors uh, that the uh, Hector has. And you can also set the intervals at which the light will change the colors. The driving dynamics are the same on the MG Hector and you still get a very nice comfortable drive when you are in this car the suspension is set perfectly it's not too stiff it's not too soft uh, even on the highways you have a comfortable drive it's not very bouncy though this is a very tall car it's not very bouncy you have some bit of vertical movement but it's not disturbing at all even at low speeds it soaks up the bumps really well it goes over the speed breakers really well and you will not have any issues in terms of the comfort and feel inside the cabin. Also, it's fairly uh, easy car to handle and drive around in the city, especially with the CVT gearbox and the new traffic jam assist feature, wherein you can set the cruise control to 10 key MPL. Uh, it's very easy, so you can you know go for pedal-less drives when you are in the city traffic jams. However, this is a long car, so making those U-turns and three-point turns could be a little challenging, but the, all the assisted features make it very easy to drive the car around the city. Uh, speaking about the mileage, there is no change in terms of the efficiency. The claim mileage is 14 kmpl. Uh, however, in the city, you should get anywhere between 7 to 8, and on the highways, you should get somewhere between 10 to 12 uh, with a very light foot. So. Yes, mileage has been a sore point for the MG Hector, especially in the petrol engines. The diesel engines are much more frugal, especially the manual. And uh, we have seen tests where in the mileage has gone up to 20 kmpl on the diesel manuals. So if you are looking for mileage, you can opt for the diesel variant. The price is starting at 14.72 lakhs. The MG Hector is a good value for money proposition. Uh, I say this because it comes with a lot of features. It is a very big car. It's a very spacious car. It can seat five people very easily and it has ample leg room. It has good comfort, good driving dynamics. And the only negative that I find in this car and a very sore point is the mileage. And that is only for the petrol engine. So if you opt for a petrol variant, know that the mileage is going to be very low. However, if you want better fuel efficiency, you can go with the diesel. It is a little expensive, but it does compensate with the fuel efficiency. Other than that, it is a feature loaded car. Now the looks of the front could be a hit and a miss. So some people might like it. Some people might not. Some people who like a subtle design language might not like this loud grille at the front. 
but there are a lot of people who like to slap on a lot of chrome on their cars and they will really really appreciate this design if you're looking for a big family car which is an suv you can definitely opt for the 2023 mg hector it is a very good choice and it is also value for money so if you are on the lookout for a big suv you should definitely check this car out check out the features check out how it drives check out the comfort and do test drive this car before you make your purchase decision if you have any questions about the hector you can let us know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching this video till the end if you like the video and the information we've provided hit the like button subscribe to motoroids if you haven't already share this video with your friends and if you're looking for car or bike reviews which are detailed always type in motoroids in your search while you're searching for videos on youtube this is Whipple signing off i'll see you in the next video until then drive hard rev free and drive safe